Off the rails. Gordon was resting in a siding. Peep, 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 peep. Hello, fat face, whistled Henry. What cheeks, spluttered Gordon. Pat Henry is too big for his wheels. Fancy speaking to me like that. Me, he went on, letting off steam. Me, who has never had an accident. Aren't jam whistles and burst safety valves accidents? Asked Percy innocently. No, indeed, said Gordon huffily. High spirits might happen to any engine. But to come off the rails, well, I ask you, is it right? Is it decent? A few days later, it was Henry's turn to take the express. Gordon watched him getting ready. Be careful, Henry, he said. You're not pulling the flying kipper now. Mind you keep on the rails today. Henry snorted away. Gordon yawned and went to sleep. But he didn't sleep long. Wake up, Gordon, said his driver. A special train's coming and where to pull it. Gordon opened his eyes. Is it coaches or trucks? Trucks, said his driver. Trucks, said Gordon crossly. Puh! They lit Gordon's fire and oiled him ready for the run. The fire was sulky and wouldn't burn, but they couldn't wait, so Edward pushed him to the turntable to get him facing the right way. I won't go, I won't go, grumbled Gordon. Don't be silly, don't be silly, puffed Edward. Gordon tried hard, but he couldn't stop himself being moved. At last he was on the turntable. Edward was uncoupled and backed away, and Gordon's driver and fireman jumped down to turn him around. The movement had shaken Gordon's fire. It was now burning nicely and making steam. Gordon was cross and didn't care what he did. He waited till the table was halfway round. I'll show them, I'll show them, he hissed, and moved slowly forward. He only meant to go a little way, just far enough to jam the table and stop it turning, as he had done once before. But he couldn't stop himself, and slithering down the embankment, he settled in a ditch. Whoosh, he hissed, as his wheels churned the mud. Get me out! Get me out! Not a hope, said his driver and fireman. You're sunk, you silly great engine. Don't you understand that? They telephoned the fat controller. So Gordon didn't want to take the special train and run into a ditch? He answered from his office. What's that, you say? The special's waiting. Tell Edward to take it, please. And Gordon? I'll leave him where he is. We haven't time to bother with him now. A family of toads croaked crossly at Gordon as he lay in the mud. On the other side of the ditch, some little boys were chattering. Coo! Doesn't he look silly? They'll never get him out. They began to sing. Silly old Gordon fell in a ditch, fell in a ditch, fell in a ditch. Silly old Gordon fell in a ditch all on a Monday morning. The school bell rang and still singing, they chased down the road. Fior, said Gordon, and blew away three tadpoles and an inquisitive newt. Gordon lay in the ditch all day. Oh dear, he thought, I shall never get out. But that evening they brought floodlights. Then with powerful jacks, they lifted Gordon and made a road of sleepers under his wheels to keep him from the mud. Strong wire ropes were fastened to his back end, and James and Henry, pulling hard, at last managed to bring him to the rails. Late that night, Gordon crawled home, a sadder and a wiser engine.